Prague is the historic and much-loved capital city of the Czech Republic. Hradčany Castle is the most popular tourist site in Prague and one of the most important cultural institutions in the Czech Republic. It is the largest ancient castle in the world. The castle, which was constructed in the 9th century, currently houses the offices of the Czech government and it has always been the seat of the Czech rulers. The official changing of the guards draws visitors to watch the exchange. The ceremony by the castle gates takes place each hour. It seems that this youngster has caught on to the precise marching steps needed not only for the ceremonies but for Prague's many cobblestone streets. Winding down to the town square are shops and cafes along the narrow avenues. Sightseers often tour in vintageados or horseless carriages, but most visitors prefer strolling along and window shopping. Efficient trams crisscross the city and offer a reliable way to travel to outlying areas. Prague, located in the heart of Europe, was the capital of ancient Bohemia for centuries. Prague was the leading center in the 16th century Habsburg court and became the capital of Czechoslovakia in 1918. When the Iron Curtain fell in 1989, Prague was free to unveil its hidden Bohemian treasures. Charles Bridge is a city landmark and one of the highlights of a visit to Prague. Probably one of the most famous bridges in the world, it was built in the mid-14th century. The 1,700-foot-long thoroughfare is lined with musicians and artists. The views from the bridge are over the Vlatava River, which meanders almost 20 miles through the heart of the city. In a Czech tradition dating back to the Middle Ages, Prague has a history in puppetry. Puppet opera is popular in the city and you can visit a puppet museum and several puppet shops. The shopkeepers will gladly demonstrate and the choices are unlimited. On busy Karlova and Soletna streets, you can find exquisite treasures along with tourist items. A number of shops carry amber, often imported, designed as jewelry items or curio pieces. Glassware of most every type and fine porcelain are particularly renowned here. Czech Bohemian Crystal remains an exclusive brand name and is available in many stores. The colorful, bustling square is undoubtedly the center, not only of the old town, but of the entire city. The town hall astronomical clock tells you more about the stars than the time of day. This Gothic edifice is a top tourist attraction and one of the city's greatest treasures. The clock was built in 1410, not so much to show the exact time as to show the state of the universe and the position and movement of the stars and planets. Fanciful characters are set in motion every hour on the hour. As the skeleton of death consults his watch, tolls his bell, and shows by an hourglass that time is up, 
Christ and the Twelve Apostles start their procession in the upper windows. Prague has always been a lovely, dynamic capital city. During the wintertime, the frost is in the air and it adds a special charm. Prague's Christmas markets consist of brightly decorated wooden huts selling traditional Czech products. From handicrafts to handmade Christmas ornaments, it's a riot of different fragrances and sizzling sounds. Crepes filled with various items are popular. Pork and beef are roasted over open flames, and there are plump, juicy sausages cooked just how you like them. Sometimes it's hard to even let them cool off a bit. Flaky pastries are sometimes rolled over hot coals, and this local specialty is a long, thin version of our donut sprinkled with a little cinnamon sugar on it for a good measure. It's one of many treats you'll find hard to resist. A program of events runs daily on a stage in the Old Town Square. Choirs and dance groups entertain, including school children who come from all over the Czech Republic. In a true winter wonderland setting, Prague is home to one of the most popular Christmas markets in Europe. The decorations in the town square alone make it worth a visit. Prague's Christmas markets are a key ingredient of the Czech festive magic at this time of year, bringing tourists and locals together to enjoy the holiday spirit in this beautiful city by the river. From Prague, we will travel by bus to Nuremberg, where we will be met by our AMA waterway ship, the AMA Allegro. The scenery is interesting and the roads are smooth and well maintained. There are many convenient rest areas along the way. They are clean with all the conveniences. On a late, chilly afternoon, the Amalegro is a welcome sight. Check-in is made easy and our luggage whisk away to our rooms. After some time to get settled, we are officially greeted by our captain and his excellent staff. Cheers. The rooms aboard the Amalegro offer every comfort, and suites are available as well. The galley is spotless as well as efficient. The breakfast buffet, quite a treat with numerous choices of fruits and cereals, cold cuts and cheeses, hot items and omelets, a little of everything. Founded in 1050, Nuremberg can look with pride on its long history of culture and as a center of Renaissance art. With a population of about 500,000, it dominates this northern Franconian region of Germany. In the square in front of the church of Our Lady, over 100 wooden stalls festened with red and white cloth 
have given Nuremberg's Christmas Market its name of a little town from wood and cloth. You'll find the typical holiday articles such as Christmas tree angels, tree ornaments and candles, toys and numerous arts and craft products. Favorite souvenirs include Nuremberg plum people, little figures made from prunes. Along the main street, a large hand-painted advent candle music box entertains. When the weather is brisk, as it is today, it seems to always be time for a snack and some warm cider. The Church of Our Lady has its own glockenspiel. And as every previous year, by Christmas Eve, more than two million visitors coming from all over the world will have sampled the delights of Nuremberg's Christmas market. From Nuremberg we will cruise to Regensburg. We will be cruising on the 106 mile long Main Danube Canal. As we head towards this lock, one of 16 on the canal, it narrows to where you could almost touch the snow covered bank. We are traveling along the highest point of our cruise, 1,332 feet above sea level. The building of this Trans Europe Canal system, traveling from the North Sea to the Black Sea, must be considered one of mankind's great achievements. Regensburg has a long and distinguished history. The 900-year-old Roman bridge has survived the ages and was once considered to be the eighth wonder of the world. At the base of the bridge, in this 900-year-old building, is the historic old sausage kitchen. This highlight of Regensburg once catered to the Roman workers who built the stone bridge. Today it serves an average of 6,000 sausages daily. The old sausage kitchen is believed to be Germany's oldest restaurant. Most everyone agrees that it is also the best. And when you come here, there's nothing else to order. Your choices are, do you want six, eight, or ten sausages? This beautiful old city is dominated by the St. Peter Cathedral. Built in the 1300s, it has recently undergone a cleaning project with a bit left to do, as evidenced by the many different colorings of the stones. The interior is compact and fairly simple in design, yet the medieval stained glass windows are beautiful to behold. The sculptures, paintings, and statuary quite remarkable. Next door is the old monastery, transformed into an exceptional country-style inn. In a city as historic as Regensburg, there is much to see and do. Near the cathedral, the streets and squares of this UNESCO World Heritage Site are filled with sparkling Christmas lights. Regensburg is one of Germany's best preserved medieval cities and through the narrow streets and courtyards, quaint shops and cafes are tucked away. This is also where the locals shop for their everyday needs and you are able to snack on fresh fruit or vegetables.
there is something here for everyone, including a merry-go-round for the younger set. This one goes at quite a pace. In the plaza area, there are plenty of choices for a snack. It seems virtually impossible to turn down a sizzling one half meter, that's 18 inches, of bratwurst. And you can be sure that every Christmas market will include some hot cider or glue wine. Along the way are artists and craftsmen who have set up stalls laden with handmade wares. One of our favorites, these pottery houses, they include a small candle to light the interior. Each year for one month in the open ground and in the courtyard of Thurn and Taxi's Palace, there is a Christmas market event like a fairy tale. Along walkways and on the courtyards, the booths are wrapped in pine and cedar boughs. The natural surroundings of the palace gardens and the many decorations adds a special feeling here. The dolls, Christmas decorations, fine quality toys, and all sorts of other gifts are a continuing temptation to your budget. If you would prefer a slowdown now and then, Feel free to join the locals and gather around the fire. <laughs> this Christmas market offers all the bustling atmosphere of great Christmas shopping along with traditional Bavarian delicacies. Salzburg is a bit of a detour from the Danube. The bus trip south is a day-long excursion to the city of the sound of music. Its setting goes with the story. A beautiful, clean, historic city, and there is much to see and do. Part of Salzburg's history involves the birthplace of physicist Christian Doppler. The Baroque Mirabel Palace is surrounded by formal gardens, statues, flower beds, and grand walkways. And today it houses administrative offices of the city. Most every area of the city is decorated for the season. The byways and small arcade areas of Salzburg often hold surprises in the form of restaurants and specialty shops. These handmade wooden ornaments are highly prized as decorations and gifts. Salzburg's most illustrious citizen was Mozart. There's a small museum in the house where he was born and many other reminders. Dessert pastries are an important part of the lifestyle here. Bakeries are well supported and some of the sweets in Mozart form and packaging. His statue is here in the town plaza to honor him. In the winter, it becomes an ice skating rink. 
Mozart surely would have approved this idea to teach youngsters to skate while giving them some security. It seems to save a number of bumps and bruises. Along the narrow streets, the well-maintained historic buildings attest to the wealth of Salzburg's merchants, as do the numerous and costly signs indicating their businesses. Some of the handicraft booths seem to have a little bit of most everything. It pays to look around a little bit further. You might find something you like. Who knows? It seems that for some of the world, a more glamorized sound of music has become Salzburg's greatest attraction. The nearby Monsi Church, where Von Trapp and Maria were married, is quite plain from the outside, but may be the most beautiful small church in Europe. Cruising past scenic villages and towns is both interesting and relaxing. Around each bend of the river is another view, another experience. The daytime grows shorter this time of the year. Passing through the next lock at the beginning of the evening is particularly colorful. Dinner is always a pleasant event with excellent food and a chance to recount the pleasures of our day. Entertainment tonight is in the Mozart fashion with a dash of sound of music added to the holiday spirit. Melk is a small city, overshadowed by its renowned Benedictine Abbey, or Stift. It is a World Heritage Site, yet still an active Stift, with 33 monks and a school with over 800 students. An Abbey is technically called a Stift if initially it was fully funded or gifted. In this case, the funds came from Leopold III in 1113. The term abbey is still proper and most often used. The marble hall, once Leopold's ballroom, contains an impressive ceiling fresco painted in 1731 by Paul Troger. Many displays trace the monastic history, but it is the immense library that is the most impressive. At a time when most everyone else was illiterate, Monks were Europe's educated elite. The shelves of the library contain some 90,000 volumes, almost 2,000 handwritten manuscripts, and numerous other printings. A winding staircase leads from the library to the crown jewel and the heart of the abbey, the church. In the Baroque period, the creation of a work of art 
was concerned with the concept. Following the wishes of the abbot and monastic community, the overall design and detail of the church was intended to make the religious purpose of the entire construction clearly visible. Fortunately, one gram of gold could be pounded out so thinly by the talented craftsman that it covered two square meters. Vienna has always been a gateway of Western civilization. Its language is German, but its persona is music and arts. Vienna is an historic treasure in its plethora of statues, monuments, and architecture. Horses are closely identified with Vienna. However, a carriage ride does not take the place of a visit to the Spanish Riding Academy. Experiencing the Royal Lippenzahners, even if only during a training session, is not to be missed. Bred since the late 1500s, their name comes from the village of Lipeza, near Trieste. Their natural flair for parade was recognized in the Middle Ages. Their training period is seven years. All white Lippenzahner horses are born black and over six years mold to their show color. These Lippenzahners are three to five years old. The Great St. Stephen's Cathedral, the Vienna landmark, is famous for its Romanesque facade and Gothic towers. Inside, spectacular chandeliers accentuate the historic Baroque altar. This is the Mother Church of Vienna and services are heavily attended. Our concert presentation this evening is a Vienna must. It is presented by the fabulous Vienna Residence Orchestra Ensemble. Vienna lights up the skies during Christmas market time. Decorations with live pine and cedar branches add a feeling of warmth and home to the many and varied shops that make up Christmas market. Tree ornaments dazzle and dangle as friends gather in front of City Hall. The windows of the building are decorated with the days of the advent calendar, a new one opening each day. Christmas tree and angels add their glitter along with hundreds of lights. A little rain doesn't seem to dampen the spirits and only adds to the winter wonderland atmosphere. Many here have come by train or bus from other locales in Austria and the European Union. It is for some a not to be missed annual trip. Our arrival in Budapest is early in the morning and in a winter atmosphere. Our jovial captain's pirate flag seems to add to the pleasure of viewing this lovely capital of Hungary from the Danube. On his bridge, he explains the state-of-the-art equipment he uses that makes river cruising exceedingly safe. Few cities in Europe can compare with the almost 20 miles of views of our shipboard arrival. Budapest is linked to eight other countries by the Danube, making it a major shipping port. The Hungarian Parliament building is currently the largest building in Hungary 
and the largest parliament building in Europe. A landmark of Budapest, the Chain Link Bridge, was completed in 1849 and was the first permanent bridge connecting the two cities of Buda and Pest. We dock with an easy walking distance to Budapest city center and with a delightful view of the chain bridge. At the Buddha side of the bridge, the antique cable cars provide access to the palace and upper level. If you plan the short trip to the top, it's not expensive. Just take along some local currency. They only accept the Hungarian florin. The chain link bridge is pedestrian friendly and provides an easy link to the best side of the Danube. It is the business, hotel, and shopping side of the city. Budapest tram system provides convenient ways of getting around, and during the holidays, this little guy adds some fun. One of the oldest legislative buildings in Europe, the Parliament building is of great local pride. The Gothic Revival style building is a three quarter replica of the British Parliament building with 88 statues adorning the exterior. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire fill the air with a holiday fragrance as sightseers and shoppers go about their way. A huge Christmas tree decorates the plaza at St. Stephen's Basilica. It is the largest church in Budapest and second in size only to St. Peter's in Rome. <laughs> Whether shopping at the decorated Christmas booths or in designer stores, this time of the year is perfect for people watching and sipping some hot glue wine. It is next to impossible to resist tasting the local delicacies be it spicy sausages, stuffed cabbage, or freshly made pastry horns. Strolling through the entire area is a delight to the senses. Even Scrooge would find himself in the holiday spirit. These markets have the perfect atmosphere for just walking, sipping a drink, or having a snack along the way while looking for that perfect Christmas gift to take home for a relative or a friend. Locals were everywhere at every Christmas market we visited. This is their home and they were enjoying it. And they were openly happy to see us join them. Budapest Riverfront by day is beautiful. By night, it is spectacular. We would like to wish you all happy holidays. You'll see all of this and more on an Ama Waterways River Cruise.